So we're talking about uh, the new Shimano XTR. If you've been living under a rock, you may not be aware of it, uh, but if you've got access to the internet, like most of us, you'll probably know that uh, Shimano have released their, uh, their latest top-end group set uh, with a full 11 gears, and it's also got a, uh, an electric shifting DI2 option. Obviously, this is a big departure in the world of mountain bikes. Again, roadies have had uh, electric shifting for a while now, but uh, off-road, it's all been mechanical. So it's still pretty fresh. Uh, very few people have uh, had the chance to ride it so far. However, we have one sat here. Uh, this is Tom, a technical editor of What Mountain Bike. And uh, so, Tom, you've, you've actually had a chance mm -hmm. to go and ride it. How did, how did you find it? Yeah, I popped out to the World Cup at um, Albstadt where Shimano had their launch. And uh, <laughs> I think it was one of six working group sets. Um, I've ridden the DI2 on the road quite a lot anyway from sort of my days of Cycling Plus. Um, and it didn't really surprise me in any way. The, the performance of, of DI2 XTR is incredibly good. It shifts snappily, quickly, easily. Um, the big story for me on the performance though is, is with the shifters. Um, so with the road, there's not that much customization really you can do with, with what button does what yet. But on the XTR, you can go into the uh, Shimano's computer program and really tune exactly what each of the buttons do. You know, your shifters have got two buttons with a definite click and each of them has actually got two clicks and you can really sort of get into the nuts and bolts of what each of those do. And that for me was what made DI2 XTR like, really interesting. Yeah, so DI2 XTR's it's big party trick is that uh, you can run it as a single ring drivetrain a la SRAM XX1 uh, um, or you can run it with multiple rings up front and then you can actually set it up so it'll work uh, just off a single shifter, so just off your right hand shifter. Mm. So you can just use one click and it'll actually sequentially shift down through all the gears, including the front chain rings, and you can actually set up the, uh, the change points uh, where it shifts to a front ring. That's called synchro shift, um, where it's changing the, the front and rear mechs itself. Um, Unlike the road, you've actually got a little little computer screen which is mounted on your bars, and this gives you various bits of information. You know what what gear you're in, and there's two different synchro shift modes which you can select while you're riding. So you could have one which is slightly more aggressive for, for when you're really attacking, or you can have one which is a bit easier for perhaps when you're approaching climbs. Uh, and you do this in the in the computer, you know, back at home. And then yeah, as you're riding, you can change it between synchro one, synchro two, or you can turn it off if you still want to run the two shifters. I think this probably comes to the next point which is, so it's, it's obviously clever, it's Shimano, it's really well engineered, you can't deny that by any means. But I think the more pressing question is, uh, in your view, what, what advantages does it actually bring, apart from it's, it's an exercise in, in basically in technological skill? Um, uh, I think the thing to probably bear in mind, and, you know, in the UK at least, or in the UK riding scene, cross-country racing isn't massive, really. If you go to the continent, the Germans, the, the French, you know, the, the XC racing scene is big. And I think this is where XTR DI2 is going to really come into play more, as opposed to a, trail, a UK trail rider. It works incredibly well for racing. You can, it's, it's not that much heavier, I don't believe. But if you look at the road side of things, the, the lightest DI2 setup is actually 20, about 25 grams lighter than a mechanical. So it's, you're not adding weight. Is that including the battery? That's including the whole shebang. From, from what Shimano sort of said and a little bit of internet search, and that's what I believe is true. So I don't think the weight there's going to be the issue, but it's the, the speed of the change and the accuracy of the change. You're not relying on a cable which might have stretched, which might be slightly out of kilter. It works, and it works every time consistently. Um, and I think for cross-country racing, that's, that's exactly what you need. The other sort of benefit to it, especially on longer races, you know, when, you, when you're really tired, when you're knackered, it sounds daft when you're sort of sat on a sofa, but the effort to make a change with the mechanical shifter, um, when you're absolutely balls to the wall, you know, you, you can feel it, you've got, you've got to push it. With a DI2, it's a click, and it never changes. It's just super easy, super simple, and when you're tired, I think that's a real benefit. So, I think for me, the SRAM XX1 was a stroke of genius, because it solved a whole load of problems uh, and simplified stuff at the same time. Whereas XTR seems to just picked a party trick and be creating this thing without actually simplifying anything and actually introducing a whole level of complexity and expense which is very unlikely to benefit the uh, the average rider mm. at any point in the future. The technology is very very expensive, you're talking £430 per mech uh, and then you need to factor in the cost of each shifter which I believe is £150 quid each. It's about that, yeah. Plus then the, the brain 
um, and then the battery. So this is not going to be a cheap setup. Mm. It's going to be eye-watering. I think that's definitely a fair point. And I spoke to the guys at Shimano about sort of the simplicity of the system. And, you know, their point on it, you know, it's very much Shimano's point on this is that um, if you've got a dual ring set up at the front, which is what they expect a lot of people to do with the synchro shift, you know, you only have to worry about one shifter like you have to do for, for, for SRAM. Um, and their point on having sort of a, a smaller range of gears in the cassette, you know, is it 11 to 40, is that they, they've tried to minimise the, the difference in cadence between each individual gear to, I think it's 15% change between it as a maximum. Um, and certainly for their, their cross-country racers, they were saying that they like having that sort of, a, you know, on the road bikes you get a much closer cassette so you get a much smoother sort of change between gears and, and that's what the cross-country racers liked. I'd agree with you definitely on a trail rider's point of view. If I was specking a bike to run a one by system, I think SRAM probably going to be the one you choose. You've got that wider range of gears, um, which is a bit easier to get away with on steep hills. And, and as a trail rider, you're probably less concerned about the sort of the, the change in cadence in, in between individual gears. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they do. The the single sort of chainring which Shimano sort of presented at, at, at Alpstadt, um, the racers were still using a chain guide just to be absolutely sure because the rings were still in prototype form. Um, I believe they're going for a slightly squarer tooth profile and a little bit taller, but it's not narrow, wide or thick, thin or whatever you want to call it like Strong have done. So I think they've got a bit of work to do on that, but we're looking forward to seeing it when it, when it lands. The Shimano XTR does actually integrate with Fox's ICD uh, remote lockout system. So there's going to be some interesting things in the future, maybe sort of like you can automatically lock out when you're in a certain gear or you can mess about with that. I think we're going to see a lot of people like hacking it about. But where's it going to go from there, do you think, in your mind? Um, I, I think you reach a saturation point of what things can go. You can't have electric wheels, you know. So once, you, once you've joined the, the gears to the, the dropper, to the suspension, I mean, Shimano just got their, their new action cam. There's sort of work you can do with that, GPS systems. There's a lot of integration you could do. Um, I don't think it'll ever be forced down your throat so much. Um, but, you know, it's a bike at the end of the day. There's only so much you can do electronically. Um, and I think once you've got the gears, you've got the suspension, you've got a GPS and a camera, what else is there really? So Shimano in the past, whenever they come out with something new, it hasn't taken long for it to trickle down to the more affordable group sets. For example, the uh, the Shadow Plus clutch mech, uh, you can now get that at Dior level. So I think that's like a £50 mech, um, whereas originally it was on uh, XTR, so that's a 100 quid plus mech. So Tom, what do you think the chances are of uh, seeing DI2 on Dior within the next five years? In the next five years, no chance. I think we'll see it down to XT level in the next five years. Um, but it's certainly going to be a slower, slower rate of trickle down than, than the other technologies, simply because the cost of it. You know, it's taken a long time for Shimano to, to even get the XTR to this level. Um, we saw mutterings of it back early this year, um, and we're not even looking at getting samples until autumn. Um, it's, it's big technology, it's taken them a long time. It's not going to make its way down to Dior in the next five years. Next ten years, maybe SLX, Dior, but it's not going to be any time soon. For me, it's sort of like, wow, it's amazing, it's shiny, it's dead clever, it's super smart. Mm. But at the end of the day, you're kind of going, but where will it lead? What will it do? How will it make riders' lives better? I think better? it'll lead to, simplest, lead to simplicity in the future. When you've got a, a new rider jumping onto a bike and they've got two shifters uh, with two little windows, which doesn't really tell them very much, and one thumb shifter does one thing on the back and one you know, does the opposite on the front, it's quite confusing. What you'll be able to do in the future, if they can trickle it down to sort of more entry-level bikes, is make it super simple. This shifter does that, and that's that. I think that's where that's where the volume will come, and that's where it's going to be quite interesting in the future. It's a very complicated way of making something simpler. That is true, but I think you know, for now, let's just remember it's XTR XT race. It's, it is it's a cross-country race group set at the moment, and not many punters are going to buy it. But it's there. It's sort of a, a highlight of Shimano's range, and it, it's impressive. It works really well. Um, but let's not get too excited about it yet for trail bikers. For most of us, um, we might as well just continue to buy normal mid-range group sets mm. and, uh, and not have to sell our children into slavery um, to afford a new mech.